Well, good morning, First Baptist Church. Welcome to digital worship this morning as we gather together on this Easter morning to celebrate the risen Savior. And it's a little different this Easter. The sanctuary is not packed out, but hopefully your living room is packed out. You're gathered together with the body of Christ. And uh, we're, as I've said throughout this, although the church is the church building is closed, the church is alive and active. And so hopefully uh, this is an opportunity for you to worship the risen Savior. Think about what Christ did and how he overcame the sting of death. We've got a little uh, video we want to share for you of one of our church members reading scripture as a call to worship this morning. Reading is from Acts 10, verse 34 through 43. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, that word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showed him openly not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him, will receive remission of sins. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the many blessings that each of us receive from you every day. And even though the world is in turmoil, we know that we are in your hands and that you will watch over us. We pray for our church and our church family. We pray for Pastor Chris his family, and the leaders of our church. We pray for the volunteers, our law enforcement, our first responders, and those on the front line in the medical field. We pray for those working in local businesses so that we can receive essential goods. We pray that you will keep them all safe. We pray for the leaders of our country and the world that they will make the right decisions. And we pray that they will come to you for guidance. We know that this will pass and we'll be stronger for it. We know this because we know you love us so much that you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. Let us all remember the significance of Easter Sunday. And even though we may not be able to be with our family, friends, and loved ones, we know that you are always with us. Again, we thank you for your blessings and we offer up these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. We also uh, want to remind you that giving is part of worship. And so uh, if, we were, if we were all gathered here today, we would certainly be taking up an offering and, and using that money to further the kingdom and support the work of the local church. But we want to remind you on this Easter that there are ways you can still give. I shared with these last, with, uh, last week with you. Um, remind you, you can write a check. Write a check and send it to the office and Beverly will check the mail every few days, and uh, that will make its way into, uh, into the, the account. You can also go to our website. There's a, there's a button on the top bar of our website that says Giving. You can click on that button and follow that to a, a link through a service called Abundant, and it'll help you process a check or a payment to us. You can download the app. That's what I do. I downloaded the Abundant app in the iTunes store, 
and um, set up an account, and I can just enter a number and immediately send my offering in. And then you can also empower, many of you do, you can empower your bank to send a, a check to the church, and that's another way that you can do that this morning. But we want to take a moment as we begin our service, after we've welcomed you, and after we've had scripture, we want to, to, uh, to pray to the Lord that he would bless this service, and uh, he would bless you. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to watch over our church this morning. We ask you to watch over our people that are scattered. Lord, we're the body of Christ, whether we're in this building or whether we're at home in our living room. And so we pray. Pray for the offering. We just ask and encourage people to be faithful to give and to support the local church, even in the times of a pandemic. And so we also ask you to bless that offering. Lord, we ask you to bless this time of worship as we gather together and we pray and we sing and we, and we think about your word and we preach the truth of the text. Lord, we pray that you would, um, you would use this digital offering, that it would, be, it would be a sweet fragrance unto you. It would be genuine worship. Even though there only may be a, a few gathered here, but it would be true worship. And Lord, would you um, again be with your church? There are those today that are hurting. There are those today that are healing. There are those today that are in need of help. And God, we ask you in each of those situations that you bring your comfort and your power in a way that only you can. God, we love you. And it's in the risen name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Good morning, church family. We're going to sing a couple of hymns for you at this time. We're going to sing First He Lives, and then we're going to sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today. Two great hymns of uh, declaring that uh, our Lord and Savior has risen from the dead.
you pray along with me. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and your gift you give us this day, this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Day. And Jesus, thank you for coming and rescuing us from sin. I pray right now, if there's someone here today, even right now, even right now, that doesn't know you as their Savior, that put their faith, their trust, their hope in the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I want to pray right now for our families at home, children at home, people alone at home. Remind them, Lord, that no matter what they're going through, because of Jesus' resurrection, they have hope. They can overcome whatever they're going through, even in the middle of darkness. And God, give people rest, give families assurance that you're going to take care of them. I know people are high stressed and strung out and uh, children are upset and uh, parents are going to lose it. Lord, I ask for extra grace, extra mercy this week on them as they teach, as parents teach and love on their children. I pray children listen and obey. I pray these things and trust Jesus for these things, the risen Savior. Amen. going to sing for you at this time, uh, Healing is in Your Hands. Our choir did it a number of years ago, um, and you'll recognize it, I think, uh, from the radio uh, as one of the praise and worship choruses that are often sung. It's got a little age on it, but uh, we think you'll enjoy it.
chapter 24. While you're making your way there in your living room, in your easy chair, I want to talk to you about uh, several years ago I uh, found some unbelievable facts on the internet. Unbelievable facts. Here they are for you. Did you know that the human eye is so sensitive that if the earth were flat you could spot a candle in the dark from 20 miles away? Alaska is the northernmost, westernmost, and easternmost U.S. state. Antarctica is the world's largest desert. It may not seem like a desert, but Antarctica receives less than two inches of precipitation annually. The Sahara receives almost four inches annually. The Earth's population of ants weighs the same weight of the entire population of humans. Ants outnumber humans one million to one, making up their small size and, and weight when collected together. The deepest part of the ocean is so deep that Mount Everest were to be placed at the very bottom, the peak would still be submerged by more than a mile of water. We all understand the use of YouTube during this time. We sometimes almost can't even make the internet work because we're all at home watching Netflix. But did you know that every day there's 16 years worth of video uploaded on YouTube? Every day, 16 years worth of video is uploaded. If you're over 45, the world's population has doubled in your lifetime. There are, there are whales alive today that were born before Moby Dick was written. And here's my favorite. Will Smith today is now older than Uncle Phil was at the beginning of Fresh Prince. The four people in here actually laughed at that. The four that had seen it. These are, these are examples of what we might call unbelievable facts. Well, I'll tell you this. The resurrection to many 
For many, it is an unbelievable fact. They, they just can't get their head around the idea that, that someone would die on a cross, that, that he would literally stop breathing, not go to sleep, and that he would be put in a tomb, and that he would come to life again by the power of God. So, I, but, but we need to be remembered that this is a fact that you need to believe in. Believing, believing is what saves us. Paul says in Romans that we are justified by faith. Well, faith is belief. And we're believing in what? Not, as I said a few weeks ago, not just believing in God, not just saying, well, I have, I have faith. No, we're not talking about an Instagram picture. We're talking about faith in some facts. And what are those facts? The fact that Jesus came, that he was born of a virgin, that he lived a sinless life, that he walked and performed miracles, and that he ultimately was betrayed, he was arrested, he was tried, he was murdered, he was buried, and he rose again, and that there is a joyful resurrection. And that's what we put our belief in. That's what we put our belief in the facts. So I want to read the text to you this morning. From Luke chapter 24, very familiar text for many of you, I'm sure. The Bible says, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared, and they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. And they were frightened and they bowed their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. And they remembered his words, the Bible says, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene and Joanne, the mother of uh, and Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. But these words seemed to them idle talk, almost as if they were even themselves had a hard time believing in this reality. And they did not believe them. But Peter rose and ran to the tomb and stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes and, them, and by themselves, and he went home marveling at what had happened. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate the resurrection. We celebrate and rejoice in the empty tomb. And Father, as we look at this text and we apply it to our lives, might you speak truth to those watching this. Might there be just one person today as Brooks has prayed that doesn't know you? Might this be the day that they're faced with the facts of the resurrection? Might you open their heart and might they repent of their sins and put all of their faith in Jesus? We pray this in His name. Amen. I want to share just three thoughts with you about this text. First thing is this. There's a marvelous event that continues to perplex. You saw that word in the text. They were perplexed. Uh, the passage begins innocently enough. Those that are going to claim the body of Jesus approach the tomb. And instead of, finding, instead of finding a sealed tomb, they find the stone rolled away. And they find that the body of Jesus isn't there. The scripture records they're perplexed about this event. I'm a little perplexed about this event as well, but not because there's an empty tomb. I'm more perplexed about their reaction. These men and women have been with Jesus for three years. They have saw wonders. They have saw miracles. They saw, they've literally saw the dead come back to life. They saw the lame walk. They saw the blind be able to see. And here they are in this moment, and they 
are perplexed about what Jesus had predicted. Remember, they had heard. They had heard the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. Yet they come looking for Him, looking for the body, looking to take care of it. They had forgotten what Christ had promised. Yet when the apostles are informed of the, by the women, it seemed to them, you remember what it says in the text? It seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe. Even they had a hard time seeing this prediction fulfilled. Can I be very honest with you? I think that many today continue to be perplexed at this truth. They, they continue to be perplexed at the, the truth of this event, the power of this event, the historicity of this event. Many today find the facts of the resurrection unbelievable. Folks, I'm telling you, it's truth. We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, buried, and rose again. And the Bible confirms these things. We believe the Holy Spirit that's taken up residence in our in our hearts, in our, in our bodies, also confirms this fact. So on this day, on this day of Christ's resurrection, it's clear that there was disbelief. Peter even left, the Bible says Peter left the tomb marveling. Now that would be best explained being filled with wonder and astonishment at the event. I can't even imagine in my mind Peter walking away just kind of shaking his head. Just sort of bedazzled at what has happened. So here's my first challenge to you, friends. On this Easter Sunday, believe. Believe in God. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the gospel. The Bible affirms that if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, you will be saved. So if you're sitting in that... Uh, Grandma's house, you're sitting at your parents' house, as I always have been preaching to that kid held hostage. This Easter is a good Easter to believe in the gospel. Believe in the cross, the finished work, the blood-stained old rugged cross and the empty tomb. But I have a second question for you. It's a timeless question that should still be pondered. And here it is. Why do you seek the living among the dead. Wow, what a beautiful language that's given here in this text. The grave couldn't hold Jesus. Though the power of God, the, through the power of God, the Son of God overcame death. There's no tomb. There's no headstone. There's no head marker. There's nothing. Because Christ overcame the sting of death. Many look for solutions to their problems among dead and decaying things of this world. I've said over and over, I always like to share it, that everything in life has a built-in fizzle. I told you the story of my two lazy boys and my wife's yappy little dog and realizing that everything in life has a built-in fizzle, but that's where we look for the answers. But you know what? The things of God. The things of God don't have a built-in fizzle. Jesus isn't found among the dead things because He is no longer dead. Instead, Jesus is, a fa is found among the living because He lives and He brings life to the dead. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. But God was merciful. We were dead because of our sins. But God loved us so much that He made us alive in Christ. And God's wonderful kindness is what saves you. God raised us from death to life with Christ Jesus. And He has given us a place beside Christ in heaven, the Bible says. So He's not among the dead anymore. He's among the living. Jesus isn't just another dead prophet. In fact, the super highway of religion is littered with dead prophets. But guess who you won't find there? You won't find on that super highway of religion, you won't find a dead Jesus. He's the living Son of God. 
He is the resurrection and the life. And he came not only to save us from sin, but he came to trample over death by death. And he gave us life in God through Jesus Christ. So they walked away pondering and perplexed. So I would say to you at home, would you ponder on this? Stop looking for things that are going to make you happy among dead things. That next car purchase isn't going to satisfy your soul. That next relationship, that next house, none of those things are going to satisfy your soul and bring you the contentment that you need apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so that morning in Luke 24, they're there saying, stop looking here. He's not here. Put your faith in the living one. And the living one is Jesus. Let me share one more thought with you. There's a message to be proclaimed. We talked about it. If you woke up with us this morning at 7 o'clock and you got on your, your electronic device and you watched the sunrise service, you heard me talk for just a moment about the idea that we should be people that are helpful. And in being helpful, we should go and tell people. Well, this is what happens in Luke 24. There's a message to be proclaimed. The Bible says, And they remembered His words, and returning from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. The Bible says they told these things to the apostles. And this is the message that was foretold by Jesus. And do you remember what happened? The Bible says that they remembered how he had told them. This Easter message should be shared with the world. This Easter message should be proclaimed to the world. Maybe you didn't watch a sunrise service, so let me say this to you. You might gather today with family. And you might have a chance to witness to them and tell them what Jesus did in your life. And so, you know, we often talk about Easter and we think about pastel colors and we think about Easter eggs and hollow chocolates. But here's the thing. If this pandemic is giving us one opportunity, it's giving us the opportunity to strip away all of the silliness of Easter and to get to the core message and the message is that a holy Christ came and died for us. And then on Friday, he was murdered, crucified, beaten, tortured, mocked, scourged, and that his lifeless and dead body was put in a tomb. And that as Christians, we have something to hold on to. And it's that the tomb was empty and Christ was resurrected. So I would remember that's the message to tell your family and your friends. Not that I've got a hollow Easter egg, a hollow Easter bunny for you, or I've got an egg filled with some candy, but that Christ came. And might this Easter, we just saturate the digital world with the message of the gospel that Christ came for us. So I'm going to ask you this question. It's part of this idea of going and telling Acts 1a, Matthew 28, that we should be great commission people. I would ask you this question. The Bible affirms that if you believe, you can be saved. I would ask you if you have, if you have a living hope, do you have a living hope that's talked about in 1 Peter that can only come through believing in the finished work of Jesus? Do you have that living hope? That's the first question you ought to ask this Easter. You have a living hope. And then I would say, if you believe in these facts of the gospel, you can be saved. You can be saved. You can be saved from the wrath that, was, that still awaits those that don't know him. I talked on Good Friday in a little YouTube video about the fact that Christ was our propitiation. Meaning the wrath of God that was stored up for us based on Ephesians 2. That we were by nature all children of wrath. That wrath was poured out on Christ at Calvary. And if you don't know Christ, that wrath really ultimately awaits you. But you today, you can repent and you can believe. You can believe in the cross. 
You can believe in the empty tomb and the resurrection of Christ. Now you might ask, well, pastor, I'm not there. How can I respond? I'm trapped at my grandma's. I'm going to give you a couple ways you can personally respond today. One, you can call or text me. I gave my number last week. I'm going to give it again. 352-535-3402. If you need to talk about your relationship with Jesus, I encourage you to reach out. You can email me, pastorkmullis at gmail.com and say, I just need to talk about whether I know Christ or not. I heard your message on Sunday. And I need to know how I can know Jesus in a personal way and be saved. How can I accept the free gift that Christ has given me through the cross? I pray that this message is a message of truth for you. I pray that this message is a message of resurrection and hope and joy and celebration. That there was an empty tomb. There was an empty tomb as they gathered there to collect his body. There was no body. And we can put all of our confidence in the cross and in the resurrection. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to sing. And I just, I just ask that you just have a joyful day in the Lord as you celebrate the resurrection of the Savior of the world. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. And now your Son, the Bible tells us, is sending us out to the highways and hedges, out to places to go and tell and proclaim the truth of the Bible, the truth of God's Word, the truth of the Gospel. Lord, I pray for those at home that are listening to this. There might just be one that doesn't know you. Would you change their life today? I pray this message for those that are, that are shut in, that are sheltering in their homes that it might be a message of encouragement, that their hope rests in an empty tomb. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you that the work is finished. The work of our Savior is finished. We rejoice and celebrate in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close this morning with Because He Lives, one of our congregational favorites, and what a great song to close with today, and it is Because He Lives that we can face tomorrow. So belt it out from your living room, and we'll belt it out from here.